This is going to be a brief look at Diablo 4 and its necromancy because I've only had the period of time during the open beta to look at this game and probably will not purchase the full game to investigate further because it's just too damn expensive for me right now. But every man and his dog is going to be doing a video on Diablo 4 and many of them will cover the necromancy including the aspects of it that I am unable to properly investigate during this short time period. So if you're here and watching, you're probably here for my unique opinion with regard to the mini mechanics. So let's take a look. But hang around until the end of the video to hear my opinion on Diablo 4 overall, and whether I think you should get it, and why. Right out the gate as a necromancer in Diablo 4, you're able to have three skeleton skirmishes, and they're very good. I don't have anything bad to say about them, beyond that they look a bit goofy. I'm not a fan of the lighting they have going on, and would prefer a gritty, evil looking skeleton, more along the lines of what the enemies have, but appearances aside, I'm happy with the minion. Later on as you level up you can increase this to a maximum of 5 skeleton skirmishes. Via the Book of the Dead, skirmishes and other minions can be transformed into different types or sacrificed entirely for some benefit. For example, skirmishes can be swapped out for these defenders with a mason shield or these reapers with scythes. They're all nice minions, but for the sake of quantity, I like the skirmishes the most because I can get 5 instead of 4, and they're well-rounded minions. Later on at level 15, you can get skeleton mages. These default to using dark magic, which is nice, but can be changed to use cold or bone magic via the Book of the Dead. Golems can be reached at level 25, but for this little review, I've been unable to reach this level. I'm sorry to say you have to get your information regarding this minion elsewhere. Regardless, I'm already able to assess and score the game on its minion mechanics. I'm scoring it an 8.75 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. You're able to have 10 permanent minions, 5 mages, 5 skeleton skirmishes, and presumably a golem on top of that. This fully satisfies permanent and plentiful minion categories. On top of that, the minions are very useful. If you want to see how much work they're actually doing, go try playing a druid or other minionless class and you'll really notice their absence. The skelly boys are really pulling their weight, that's for sure, so I can't fault them there. Where I can fault them though is with regard to diversity. What you've essentially got are warriors, mages, and golems, with some flavors within each of these primary categories, but it's not possible to mix and match. For example, why can I only have skirmishes, defenders, or reapers? Why not one defender, two skirmishes, one reaper? What if I don't want any mages, and would instead prefer to have all warriors? This is the type of customizability that a game like Last Epoch fully supports, and Diablo 4's ability to customize and tweak is not on the same level as its competitors like Last Epoch. Also, what has the Diablo franchise got against skeleton archers? I've been wanting these since Diablo 2, but only Last Epoch and Grim Dawn can scratch that particular itch. So I think that what Diablo 4 is doing is good, but if they want to hit a full score, what they really need to be doing is making the flavors more interesting and supporting more minion diversity. With the minion mechanics out of the way, let's talk about Diablo 4 more broadly. Diablo 4's art style, feel, look, and atmosphere is consistent with what fans like myself expect from a Diablo game. The story is also very mature and dark, with some unexpected moments that I really appreciate. It feels like a very mature story, and I really enjoyed that first little village, for example, where you're put on the cart. Diablo 4 also seems to have more going on in it than in previous Diablo games. There's side quests and things like that, which is all cool. I don't like the appearance of the skeleton minions, though. They remind me of Diablo 3, and I feel like they stand out like a sore thumb. I don't think they fit in at all, to be honest, with how they currently look. I think this is especially noticeable here in town, where everything seems to blend in and look on point, but then you look at the skeletons and they're kind of just there, glowing. Looking kind of cartoony. I don't get it. Why do they look like this? So, should you buy Diablo 4? I would say probably yes. This game feels like a step in the right direction for Blizzard and has restored my faith in them as a company a little. However, every criticism with regard to Diablo 3's non-game aspects 
can be leveled squarely at this one as well. Things like the perpetually online nature, the fact that for the same money you can probably buy Grim Dawn, all of its expansions, and Last Epoch as well, or possibly even Walken. I'd say that any of these games and companies are more deserving of your coin than Blizzard is. I'm also concerned that due to the online nature, modding probably won't be a thing for this game, which is a big shame. Like with Grim Dawn, you can just take it and mod it to your heart's content. There's a billion mods out there for the game. And even before necromancy was officially a thing, you could just go and get modded necromancy. So that's a big concern for me, because I really like to mod my games. And this perpetually online thing has always been a point of contention for me, because I don't like being forced to be online to play what is essentially a single player game. But yeah, there's my thoughts on Diablo 4. Overall positive. As a little aside regarding the druid, it doesn't seem to be capable of summoning anything, which is kind of a shame. But what they have done is gone very heavily in the shape-shifting direction in a very positive way. In Diablo 2, shape-shifting was kind of like a toggleable thing, and it was kind of clunky and just a bit annoying in general I found. But in Diablo 4, the shape-shifting is very kind of fluid and temporary. Like, you'll morph into a werebear for the particular werebear abilities, and then glide into werewolf form for the werewolf abilities, and then back into human form. It's all just kind of flowing and very sort of fluid and temporary, which is, in my opinion, much nicer than the sort of rigid, toggleable forms that Diablo 2 had where you're kind of locked into one or the other, but I really do miss the ability to summon armies of wolves and venomous plants. Thanks for watching. I've got more videos and necromancy stuff coming soon. My bags are full.